finally, Thermo Grizzly has finally released their Carbonaut. And I've been waiting for this since March, and they were taking a really long time to release this. So let's take a look at how this is applied and how it performs compared to the stock Thermo Paste on my Alienware laptop. In terms of the packaging, it's in a standard Thermo Grizzly style package. So I actually haven't even opened this yet, so let's take a look at what's inside here. So this one is the 25 by 25 package. And the 25 by 25 is meant for a NVIDIA RTX 2080 GPU. So inside we have, we have the certificate of origin. This is telling you how to apply it. We'll take a look at that later. Well, it looks nice. So that's the little Thermo Grizzly pouch here. It looks like there's lots of seals. Okay. So this probably looks exactly the same. So we'll skip that. So one thing to be careful about is there's a little um, stable here. As far as I can tell, this is the thermo pad. It wasn't in the middle of this little piece here. So I'm not sure if it got moved during shipment, but I would be very careful. This thing is extremely thin, wow. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and apply this. So let's get the laptop opened up. All right guys, so we're gonna start off by using isopropyl alcohol to clear off the thermal paste off the CPU and GPU. So I'm just gonna go ahead and clean up the CPU and GPU so we can get started with the thermal grizzly. You wanna make sure you get the dye nice and clean so that it's shiny, such as this. And don't forget to also get the heat sink. Both sides should be perfectly clean. So for applying the thermal grizzly, as far as I saw, you just apply the little pad on top of the die. So I suggest to be very careful because this thing looks or feels really flimsy and just lay it right on top of the die and align it so that the whole pad is covering all of the die. It should be like a perfect cut according to Thermo Grizzly. Next off, we're going to try ahead and get the CPU going. Again, try and grab it from the corner. It's This thing is like, I'm just so afraid of ripping this. It's so flimsy, honestly, and it's so thin. So once again, we're going to go ahead and cover the whole CPU die. The little edge here is not being covered. Just got to move it a little bit. Okay, there we go. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to grab the heatsink and apply it on top. And I'm gonna apply lots of pressure while tightening it because they said to apply as much pressure as possible. The higher the pressure, the better this performs. So we'll see how that ends up. Looking at the results, they don't look too promising. The idle temperatures went down, but unfortunately the load temperatures on both GPU tests one and two are higher than they were with the stock paste. Now this is a 3D Mark Time Spy run, and looking at the CPU, this, it's, the situation doesn't change at all. The idle is lower, but the load temperatures went up quite a bit. In this case, we saw an increase of 7 degrees Celsius between the stock paste and the carbonate pad. Interestingly though, when looking at the scores, they didn't really change much. I'd say these are within margin of error, which is interesting because even though they're running hotter, there was really no throttling during these tests yet. However, looking at Citibench, things were a little different. While we did reach 96 during the stock paste, we reached 100 degrees and we did thermal throttle with the carbonate pad. And this was concerning. What's interesting is, again, the scores aren't that different. So there is a possibility it did thermal throttle a bit with the stock pace, but I just didn't see the thermal throttling limit being hit. In terms of heaven for the GPU, 
once again 83 for Carbonaut and 80 for Stock Paste. We saw an increase again compared to the Stock Paste. And the score doesn't really change much because the GPU doesn't actually fully throttle until 87 on the Alienware laptop. So do I recommend Bamboozy Carbonaut? Probably not. As you saw from the results, the temperatures not only increased, but it didn't seem to do any better than stock thermal paste from the Dell laptop, which is not a high-end paste, but it's a decent paste. I think the issue is that the thermal pad is too thin, and this is causing the contact not to be as good, even though I put as much pressure as I could when I tightened the heatsink. So I think it's best to stick with thermal compounds like Icy Diamond, Cryonaut, and if you really need high performance, liquid metal is still the best way to go. The one good news is I don't have to worry about repasting my laptop, but I don't know how long I'll stick to using Cryonaut. I'm going to continue to use it to see if things change in the next few weeks, you know, maybe this curation period, but other than that, I wouldn't really recommend it right now. So with that said, hopefully we can find some better solutions in the future because this product has lots of potential. I really like where this product's going, but the performance is just not there. With that said, uh, like and subscribe. Support me with the links below if you can, and I'll see you guys in the next one.